with Jesse Vargas. I want to invite you to watch Jay Calderon boxing. All right, check us What's out. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Calderon, Stan Clee Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. We're going to talk about the upcoming fight that's going to take place this Saturday, April 21st at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. It's a triple header that Showtime Championship Boxing is going to premiere about 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yours truly, Jay Calderon, will be in the building. First, we're going to cover the fight between junior lightweight, former world champion at 130 pounds, Javante Tank Davis, making his return against former featherweight champion, hard-hitting knockout puncher from Argentina, Jesus Quasar. This is a very great matchup between these two fighters right here. It's probably going to be the best fight of the evening. I guarantee it. This is an all-out action-packed war that's going to take place at the Barclays Center, and you're not going to want to miss this fight. Javante Tank Davis is a young, talented fighter, 23 years old. This guy is a southpaw with explosive punching power in both hands. He's very fast with his hand speed, and he has good, solid, decent, fundamental boxing skills. Mayweather has already said that if he gets through this fight right here, that he wants to line up a fight between him and Lomachenko. That's a fight matchup that fight fans have been calling for, but it's one that Javante Davis is not ready. And he has to be focused for this fight right here because Quasar, even though he's been in a long layoff, it's been about a year and a half since he's fought, He's coming off that long layoff. He's moving up to 130 pounds for the very first time because he's fought at 126 pounds as a featherweight. He had a featherweight title. He's a very good, strong fighter. Physically, mentally tough guy. This guy has a pretty good chin, and he's an aggressive bull. A pressure type of fighter that likes to go to the body, and he's a very hard-hitting puncher with both hands that could put you onto the canvas at any moment in this fight. He likes to get you up against the ropes, and he likes to wail away on you with those big, wide shots. He's pretty slow in there. You know, he's not a quick fighter. His hand speed is not that fast at all, you know, but he's very strong, and he's going to be extremely tough for a guy like Javante Davis. Davis has to be mentally focused. Focus. He has to be mentally tough to get through a fight like this because this is no easy task for him. I believe that Quasar is the best fighter that he has ever faced in his entire career. You know, Quasar has been in there with the likes of Vic Darchinian and also Abner Morris. And he put up very good competitive fights against both of these men. So it's going to be a tough fight for a guy like Javante Davis. And if all those outside distractions that he's been going through, you know, is not having him focus for this fight, then he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's an upset this night. I'm telling you right now, this guy from Argentina is no joke. He will put the pressure on Tank and he will break Tank down in a slugfest. Tank is going to have to play the role of boxer puncher. He can't go into a slugfest like he likes to do sometimes. I know he likes to get excited for the fans and he likes to put on a great show. He looks for the knockouts, but if he goes into a toe-to-toe battle with Quasar, Quasar is going to be able to let those hands go. He's going to land his big bombs and he might put Javante Tank Davis to the canvas. So I'm pretty excited about this fight because I know it's going to be a war. I know it's going to have a lot of fans at the Barclays Center standing on their feet because these guys are going to go toe-to-toe so and it's gonna be one hell of a fight who got the better chin we're gonna find out we're gonna see if Quasar could take the hand speed and the punching power of Tank Davis or we're gonna see if Tank Davis is gonna break down mentally and get beaten down in this fight and possibly get stopped or lose on the scorecards in a 12th round decision but I look for an upset in this fight and I'm gonna go with the Argentinian fighter and Jesus Quasar for the victory win, perhaps by knockout stoppage victory in the late rounds. Now, also on that triple header card, we have Jamel Charlo at 160 pounds, the former junior middleweight champion, now campaigning in the middleweight division, and he's looking to make a statement in this fight. He's going up against Hugo, the boss, Centennial Jr. This is a good matchup, but it's a matchup where I see Centennial, a guy that's a tough Mexican-American fighter that comes to fight. He's a big guy. He has that slight height and reach advantage over Charlo, but Charlo is a complete fighter. This guy is a beast. He has great hand speed. He has good punching power, very good solid boxing skills, uses his jab beautifully, likes to go to the body, likes to put the pressure on and break down his opponents. And Centennial is a guy that has solid boxing skills. He has tremendous heart. He trains very hard. He comes in there 100% ready to fight, but how really is he ready for a guy 
like Charlo. This is a big step up for Centennial. You know, this is the best guy that he's possibly faced in his career. But I see Charlo basically breaking this man down and getting a very good knockout performance in spectacular fashion and really putting out a statement in this fight to show everyone in the middleweight division that he's putting the 160-pound weight division on notice because Charlo has arrived. He's a super talented fighter. I like Charlo a lot. You know, a little bit too cocky for my taste, but the guy is the real deal. Tremendous talent, and I want to see him against Daniel Jacobs. That's the fight that fight fans truly want to see. I know he wants the big money fights against Triple G, against Canelo Alvarez. Those are the big top dogs of the division, but Daniel Jacobs is the man to really test the skills of a guy like Jamel Charlo because this is the matchup that's going to really push him. Two big middleweights. Two guys that have great hand speed, two guys that have explosive punching power, and the technique of boxing skills, the style matchup between both of these men will put on a great fight at the Barclays Center if these guys are really serious about facing each other. Daniel Jacobs is fighting a week later at the Barclays Center, and he's already stepped to Charlo, and he's told him, after they both take care of business in their next fight, let's get it on. And I love that about Jacobs. He has that Brooklyn mentality that he's willing to take on anybody. Tremendous heart. He's ready to step into the ring. and He's ready to show this man that he is the better fighter between the two. And I believe Daniel Jacobs will beat a guy like Jamel Charlo if they ever meet in the ring. And that's a fight that I very, very much want to see. It's a great matchup. And I think that he's going to get right through Hugo, the ball centennial, with a very good knockout performance, perhaps around the fifth or the sixth round in this fight right here. And I look forward to seeing him live and seeing him put on a great show. Now, the main event of the evening is four-time division world champion Adrian the Problem Brona versus former two-time world champion Jesse Vargas. This is a really nice matchup. I like this matchup. You know, a lot of people, they talk about Adrian Brona. They say that, you know, this guy is really a hype job. He's been a Floyd Mayweather wannabe for quite some time, you know, Adrian Broner, I've never been a fan of his, but this guy is a very talented fighter. He's just not mentally tough. He's a guy like Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz had talent, he had speed, he had power, but mentally, when the going gets tough, he couldn't get past that hurdle. AB has some of the best talent in boxing. This guy has great hand speed. This guy has a lot of flash, he has style, he has good boxing skills, you know, but when he trains, he's not 100% focused. Sometimes he doesn't make the weight. Sometimes he just has lapses when he's fighting in there and he's getting into a tough fight. When he stepped up against the likes of Marcos Madonna and Sean Porter in those fights where he just really couldn't get past the next level. And people like to say he's a four-time world champion. Listen, man, who did this guy beat? Who did he really beat in there to become world champion? The best guy on his resume that he won a world title from was Paulie Malignaggi. And a lot of people felt that Malignaggi actually won that fight. That fight was very competitive and very close. And Broner barely squeaked out a victory just to get that title. So, you know, you really can't measure up his resume. Even though he's fought some good fighters, he has some good names on his resume. We saw that in his last performance against Mikey Garcia, a guy that moved up from the lightweight division up to 140 pounds to take on Adrian Broner. He got outboxed and outclassed for 12 rounds. And I think a guy like Jesse Vargas, who started out his career at 140 pounds and has been campaigning at welterweight for quite some time, is the bigger man. This guy has a height and a reach advantage over Adrian Broner. And he's coming back down to a catch weight of 144 pounds. And he's going to be the stronger guy in there. He's going to be the bigger man in that fight. He has boxing skills. He's working with new trainer, former world champion Mike McCullen, the body snatcher. And this guy is going to have him ready. See Jesse Vargas giving AB a very tough fight in this fight. You know, it's going to come down to who puts the better game plan and executes in this fight. AB has a new trainer as well. And this guy looks to be, you know... Talking the talk, he looks like he's doing what he's supposed to do in the gym. He's looking ready. He's looking in great shape. He's showing that flash. But when he steps into the ring under those bright lights, what does he really bring to the table? You know, the first couple of rounds, you're going to see him using that, that pizzazz, that really quick flash, hand speed, scoring some punches, looking nice and pretty in there. But then you see Jesse Vargas going to work 
with the jab, with the long reach, going to the body, putting his punches together, landing some good overhand right hand shots, and just really taking apart Adrian Broner. As the fight goes later on into the rounds, you see the stamina starting to drop. You see the mental toughness starting to break down. And you see Jesse Vargas really taking over this fight. And I see Jesse Vargas doing a little bit similar to what Mikey Garcia did and going down the stretch, outboxing his man, outworking his man, and winning a 12th round decision, perhaps a majority decision, because AB has a very good fan base at the Barclay Center when he performs, because AB, no matter how much people hate this guy, people love to see him lose, people love to watch him fight, and he does have a strong fan base, and this is why he's still relevant in boxing today, even though he's lost his three biggest fights, a lot of people say this is the last straw, the end of the line for a guy like Adrian Broner. This is do or die for him. He has his back against the wall. Will he rise to the occasion? Will he show that talent that he possesses to really shine in this fight and get a knockout victory over Jesse Vargas? Vargas has a pretty good chin. He's been down before, but this guy has a solid chin. Like I said, he's the bigger man. So I don't think AB is going to be able to knock this guy out. But if he has an impressive knockout and he gets a big opportunity, perhaps for a world title shot, is he going to move up to 147 pounds? I think those guys are just way too big for him at the welterweight limit. Guys like Keith Thurman, Errol Spence Jr., even Terrence Crawford, who's moving up to the division, I think it's just too much for a guy like A.B., and I don't think he can never beat any of the top fighters, the elite fighters in the welterweight division. So does he stay at 140? Can he even make the 140-pound weight division? You know, that's his best bet to fight down there. Now, if a fight opportunity against Manny Pacquiao or Lucas Matisse, who's going to fight later on this summer, is going to be there for Adrian Broner. That's a great fight matchup, you know. Tough fight for him if he fights Lucas Matisse because Matisse is a strong puncher. is a guy that is a bigger man at welterweight right now for him. And it might be the same outcome like it was against Marcos Madonna. If he fights Manny Pacquiao, he gets a great big payday. It's a big high-profile fight. But I think Manny Pacquiao at this age is still way better than an Adrian Broner and will beat Broner in a 12-round decision easily. But I see Jesse Vargas winning a 12th round decision in this fight right here at the Barclays Center. And he moves on to bigger and better things against guys like Keith Thurman. That's a fight that he truly wants to fight. That's a fight that he's been advocating and trying to push for. But a guy like Jesse Vargas, a guy with tremendous heart, I know that he would step up to the challenge and fight a guy like Errol Spence Jr. And that's a fight that we could possibly see later on in the year if... He gets past Adrian Broner, which I believe he will. But that's my final analysis and my predictions on the fights that are going to take place this Saturday. Tune in to Showtime for that triple header. It's going to be a great card, a great night of boxing for boxing fans. And I will be there in the arena having the pleasure to watch these guys go to war. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in to my YouTube channel right here, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Please hit that little red subscribe button. Put your email information in so you get all my notifications once I drop a new video. Also, hit that like button. Hit that share button. Make comments. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. And join the Facebook boxing group page. All under the same name, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon. Stan Clay Entertainment. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and subscribe.